morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Gubb here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering motivation on this year, Monday morning, rise and shine and give God the glory. And this morning here, I'm looking at a topic, take the view that all aspects of your life are part of your investment portfolio. So welcome again, hopefully you had a blessed night rest and thanks for coming by here with me. Let us pray. Our Father, words in heaven, we thank you again for the blessings of your word and this day and for the life that you've given us. I pray to the Father that you may continue to be our guide in all things. May you bless us, dear Father, that we might truly invest in ourselves and in the relationship we have with thee. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, I'm looking at this topic here. Take the view that all aspects of your life are part of your investment portfolio. And so we're looking at um, investing in yourself this week. And my main takeaway point, our focus, our concept for this week is a balanced life is a well-lived life. So a balanced life is a well-lived life. So working to maintain and achieve in balance by investing in spirituality, education, comfort, social connection, financial stability, kindness, recreation, career, and health. So this is what we want to be able to do. We want to have a broader view of what investment is and what that's what I'm talk about here this week. So diversifying your investment um, in these um, various areas will pay a well-rounded dividend. So I want to share with you this concept here this week here and this encouragement here this week that as you look at investments, look at that in life you, you, you invest um, in various different aspects of life. And this will pay you a rich re re reward. You will get a reward if you approach your life like this. That financial investment is not the only investment. Because uh, obviously, as you know, um, your spiritual investment with God is one of your biggest assets. Um, another part, big part of your asset um, that you under ma your management is your physical body. Another big part is your your mind. So you could have um, you could you should put a lot of money. A lot of stock in your physical body. You should put a lot of stock in your mind or in your brain. These are major um, holdings that you have that has more value than any home or any um, property you may have, any business you may have, your physical body, your mind, your relationship with God, yeah? and then the rest of it I'm going to talk about. So this is uh, as a good example of what it is. So, you know, how valuable do you put your body? Because as I say, it is the most advanced technology and piece of material that you manage that's on the investment or on your portfolio. So I want to share that and look at it. And this is real. Uh, it's paid me good dividends. And I want to share with you the things that you need to do this week to get the dividends back. <clears throat> Our main text for this week is in Matthew chapter 13, verse 3 through um, 9. And I'm going to read some of the rest of it later just to introduce the thought. But first here for our main text, Matthew chapter 13, verse 3 through 9. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sorrow went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell on by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Verse 5 says, Some fell by stony, some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty, who hath ear ears to ear, let him hear. So here you have the parable of Christ, and we're going to read the explanation in a few minutes, but I want to lay down some groundwork and some ground um, philosophy or concepts here that is important to understand. If you look at the seed in, in, in any agrarian society or in any society till the day, today, you have this idea of a seed. You have this idea of the seed becomes the initial investment. And um, we will say, normally in business today, we'll say, well, you need seed money. Uh, so you need something to be working with. You have your talents. That's, um, that's again, a big part of the investment, as I say. You know, you invest in your career, your trade. Um, you have the tools you work with. You have the 
seed money to buy the tools, whatever it is you want to do, seed money to go to school, to get an education, you know, time to spend to read books or to practice, whatever that seed is. And so when you throw the seed out, there's some elements in, in, in the farming um, language that you'll have to face. And these things are going to be faced in every aspect of life. But you're looking for a return, and return normally is um, titrated or connected to uh, time because you need time to be able to multiply. So the issue is always how much money grow or skill grow or whatever grow over time. And in all aspects of life, you'll find that time is always going to be an issue you're working with. How long does it take to double your money? How long does it take to double your investment? The investment could be something else that is not money. So we want to look at this this week. So when we're looking at it is, is you know, the, 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 the seed could be choked. It could be in an area that it cannot grow. So you take an investment or the seed money or the seed itself and you want it in a place that it will grow. So what do you do to make this happen? And it's the same thing when it comes on to all aspects of life because you could be successful in one area but falling apart in another area. So then normally what you need to do, like any business, you need to stop and say, well, we need to put some more investment over here so we can do better in this aspect of our lives. The more success we, we are at multiple years in our lives is the better the investment is. And as I say, you, you, no matter how valuable a person have in a sense of the amount of money they have, uh, there's a lot of time when we forget that part of our investment that needs to grow and develop over time slowly. Like any good investment is we need to invest in things that are non-financial based because this is the assets that we're given to. Because remember, the, everybody gets something at birth because if you're born, <laughs> you know, you have your body and then you have your mind, you have the talents that you're going to develop. And that's all part of the investment. You know, it's it's good to be able to make money. So even if you lose your money, you can make it again. But if you don't have the skill to make the money or you have this, you have limited skills, you're not going to be able to double your money faster with your skills. So that's part of it. So the words get choked. And we're going to come back to this explanation in a few minutes. So some basic um, quick idea of um, what is um, investment. So our topic again is to take the view that all aspects of your life all aspects of your life are part of your investment portfolio. So what is an investment portfolio? An investment portfolio is a basket of assets or a pool of assets and that can hold stocks, bonds, cash, um, or, or, and more. So it is just simply, uh, you, you, it's, it's not necessarily a physical basket um, or that you put stuff in, but the word would be or a physical, you know, brief or case uh mentally speaking it's your portfolio it's it's your list of what you have invested in so normally you, you put you know the, it could be stocks it could be like 401k it could be bonds from the government it could be our various municipality uh it could be cash cash and savings cash and check-ins you look at all of that you say um you know it could be real property it could be investment property. All of that, a business, and all of that is a portfolio or a basket. This is all what I have invested in. So normal business, that's obviously uh, investment in the sense of money was put in there or time or whatever it was, and I get back a return. So investors aim for a return by mixing these securities in a way that reflects their risk tolerance and financial goals. So risk tolerance. So there's some things that you could invest in that could give you higher return, but the risk of losing money is very high. So they normally say, in that sense, you diversify, which I'll talk about in a little bit. You diversify your investment so that if something fail over here, which is probably a high risk investment, but could give, give you a big payday, you have something over here to fall back on to invest in multiple things. But when we talk about the race of life, when we talk about life itself, one realize um, the longer one live that there's more to invest in because if you don't invest in other areas in your life, just like how you do investment, you see, nobody think it's a ridiculous idea to um, put all your eggs in multiple baskets. 
Um, but you could take all your eggs and put it in one basket. And if that basket um, fail, then you you know you 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 fail. And it could be the same thing if you know, somebody worry if the economy goes, what happened? Well, if the economy goes and all your investment is in one area of life, say money, and you have a financial crash, you literally have a crash because all your eggs is in that basket. Um, and that's all your value is. So you don't want to be, make it that just investments is value because there's other values. You, that brings the, your cap to the table. So you, you notice here, so they mix it. So the whole idea of when I, you look at not a physical basket, but a mental basket. And you look at the basket, and you say, well, what do I have in this basket? And you say, well, I have eggs. Where do I put my eggs? Do I put it all in one basket. So they will say, well, no, the, the portfolio is multiple baskets that you put your egg in and all that baskets become a portfolio in other words so you put your um your to to avoid risk tolerance so it could be in a business it could be in real estate it could be in 401k and they'll say oh so you have your investments in three baskets and said no they also have someone in some savings yada 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 so if one goes well, you know, they say most money in the in the banks are insured by the government. So the whole government would have to go and camp, um, you know, pay back the insurance. So that money is there and there's a security in that money. Then there's 401k, there's, you know, all these different things. So that's the point. So that you reduce the risk, right? So you can get to your financial goal. So there are many different types of investment portfolios um, as some are built into 401k IRA. An annuity, which others exist on their own through a brokerage and financial advisor. So you could put uh, multiple things within one basket over there, or somebody could put something over here that is long-term, that's uh, viewed for uh, retirement. So the aim for this portfolio is for retirement. The same is probably to make a certain amount of money um, in a high-risk venture and so forth. So when you're investing like this, the focal point is probably retirement or focal point is to get to a certain place for a certain, you know, thing you want to do, whatever that thing is. And so you want to do something 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, and you invest for that. And then when the money is matured, you say, okay, now it's time to pull that trigger and execute whatever I'm investing for. So basically that's what a portfolio is, a basket same same thing. It's there's a, a, a area you put certain type of it could be a certain types of investment over here and certain type of investment over here. If one thing failed, two things won't fail. All right. So that's normally the philosophy, the financial philosophy people go with when it comes on to investment. And so I want to add to that the other areas that are not financial only. Because if you're gonna if you're planning to retirement as an retire as an example. If you're planning to retire, and, you know, we don't know how long we're going to live, but just say, you know, you don't know, so you just go ahead and say, I'm going to plan for it. Normally, the focal point is you plan for retirement, and you start investing for retirement as you're getting closer to retirement, or if you're wise enough when you're younger. And as you plan for this event, the focal point is just, do I have enough money, right, to retire? But most of the time, um, over the years, I've noticed um, for this thought here that um, many don't think about, do I have enough health to retire, right? Do I have enough health to retire? And this is important because I've known so many people the moment they stop working within a year or two or some time just before they retire. They kick the bucket, they drop dead. So... If they're in a situation like that, where they're past now, and all the investments was in a portfolio that is just simply, simply financial, they didn't think about the other aspects of retirement, right? And so one has to dive, you know, broaden one's thinking about what is my goal? What am I trying to accomplish? And how best it is for me to go at this goal? And if you go at this goal properly, you'll find that you will be able to get it better because you're thinking in a more broad-based risk management. You're thinking in a truer, what is my portfolio? What do I have in my investment? Because if you can get to that point where 
not only did I take care of the financial, but also I took care of myself, my physical body. So my body can be there for me. You know, barring everything crazy happen, I make it to that age. Not going to enjoy the money. But if I didn't invest and put some of that money in my body, and I took it all and put it in financial brokerages, and, you know, in annuity, 401k, whatever, and I treat my body like it's just pure garbage. And then when it's time close or I'm already reached retirement, my body's falling apart. And what's the point? So I will show you easily, um, I wish what I'm doing this week, I will show you that you probably could cut back and say, I'm going to invest 10% less, 20% less, in my retirement, I'm going to put some of that money in my body. I'm going to take care of myself. And so that when you hit retirement, you have your body. Because that's your biggest asset, right? That's your physical being is the most expensive machinery and thing that that's on the world to me and should be to you. You know, you give me a choice between health and holding a skyscraper. I'll take the health. If it's a choice, I have to make between both. You know, so I'll take a high-rise building and take health. That's my point. So instead of saying, listen, I'm going to own the skyscraper over here and I'm going to physically die before I could enjoy the money that it generates, I say, well, why don't you just take a high-rise building? You're still going to make a lot of money. You're going to be phenomenal rich. And spend some time in the gym. Spend some time drinking some juice and eating some healthy food and meditating and, you know, spending time for, you know, giving your body time to take care of itself by getting sleep and stuff like that than to do something that you don't, you don't get no sleep, you can't get rest, you don't have no time for yourself, but you have all this money, you're going to drop dead left it, or you're going to see the money, but you can't enjoy it because you're physically so sick. So this is how you want to, it, it, you want to diversify this. So in, next thing I want to re- read for you here is in, fin, in finance, 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 um, diversification is the process of allocating capital in a way that reduces the exposure to any one particular asset or risk. So you're, you're diversifying, right? So your investment, you have to look at it as, what, what am I investing for? Because often this is not very clear for most people. What are you investing for? You're investing for a lot of time comfort. Most people don't really think about it like that. You're investing so that you can have enough to live on and secure a comfortable life, right? Now, some people could be investing for luxury. But again, if you say to me, what, what, what is the thing that I have that is most precious? And I'm going to say it's my physical being, right? It, it is that is the value, to, you know, because I have to live in this body. And the, function, the better it functions, the less pain or no pain, the better my brain functions. That's my big value. So you're still that you still want to invest in everything else, but you never want to forget yourself. You never want to forget your biggest asset, right? Your family, your relationship with God, your relationship with the your extended family. We all it's all investment. It's all something you put something, time in, energy in, prayer, you know, thoughts, thoughts and prayer. Literally, to keep somebody on top of your mind, you think about them in positive ways. This is part of your investment. And somebody could say, well, no, my only investment is just to make money, right? And then they die lonely because they never put time into people. So it would be better to diversify and then have a richer experience because this is a richer experience than to not diversify and just put time into, say somebody was a gym rat, you know, and all they do, they go to the gym and they work on their body and they have a phenomenal body. You know, say they weren't doing it unnaturally, they were doing it naturally. But they spend so much time in the gym that every other relationship and even their ability to make money uh, suffer. That wouldn't be a good investment. You know, you would say, they, have, they, they you know, long-term wise, if they didn't damage themselves and they took care of themselves, Long term wise, they they yeah, they have all their money in their body, but still you would say that's not a, that's not um, spreading out the risk. That didn't diversify enough their investments. 
they didn't allocate capital properly because it's all capital. Capital of time, capital of money, capital of energy, you know, blood, sweat and tears. It's all the same thing. You're just going to have to invest in all these things. But they didn't allocate properly. And so because of the bad allocation, they're imbalanced. And then if something goes wrong, they don't have any fallback plan because there was nothing else invest over here. So it's all investment. Um, and then one term that I want to read um, before we jump into some more things here is the term dividend, which is part of my topic again. A dividend is a distribution of profit by a corporation to its shareholders. When a corporation earns a profit or surplus, it is able to pay a proportion of the profit as a dividend or dividend sorry, to shareholder, shareholders. Any amount not distributed is taken to be re reinvested to the business called ret retained earnings. So uh, the investor would, um, the business itself, um, would pay out a dividend. And this dividend um, paid out um, is either they take some of the extra the money that they make, the surplus, the money, extra money they make, and they reinvest or they took take some of it and they pay it out to the investors. And it's the same thing. Whatever excess you have, you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay out some stuff. The difference is you're the investor. So when you invest in spirituality in the right way, you know, in a more sensible investment way, because remember, uh, the tithe and offering that you say you give, you're giving it as an investment, right? Most people don't understand they are stewards. And they think that they have to um, return. That's the only way to describe tithe and offering. But that's not the only way. You pay tithe and offering. You're a steward. You're investing it. You're investing it in you. And you're invested it in blessing others. So you're your pain into your own spirituality. But most people don't understand this is you paying you're paying hard earned cash into your own spirituality. I'm paying for this because this has value to me. Why? Because it's supposed to pay you dividend. You're investing in you. So if there is a blessing, that's your surplus that you're being paid back. Right? And so that's why you invest in your your study, your Bible study, your prayer, your meditation your financial investment into spirituality, whatever, whoever you're paying into. And that pays you back dividend. It's surplus. It pay you back a blessing. Same thing with education. If you sit down and you study the Bible, read a book, um, watch a documentary, and you feed the mind, you're 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 gonna that's gonna pay you back in the long run because ignorance is very painful. Ignorance is is not a bliss. Ignorance is very painful. There's no happiness in ignorance. And whatever you learn yesterday pays you back today. But somebody will say, well, you know, they said the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Because you you what you very you know they say garbage in, garbage out. Whatever you feed your mind on, that's what becomes dominant in your life. If you want to feed the devil in your life, then you go ahead and feed it and you will get a return on your investment. And it will pay you dividends. It will grow and it multiply and money doubles. So so does any investment in your life. So whatever you feed yourself, whatever you educate yourself, whatever sin, you know, they, they, they say normally most people when they go to prison, they come back out more wicked. Uh, why? Because they they go amongst college professors, um, educators, people have PhD in wickedness, criminality. And they go there and go learn how to be more evil. And then they come up back, and sometimes they come up back with just associate. They sometimes come up with a regular bachelor's. Sometimes they come up with a master's degree. And some people come out as a PhD. They're just monsters by the time they come out because they learn from the best evildoers. And so, and that, that, that's going to pay. Not only they're going to pay, they're going to pay their family and they're going to pay society back for sending them to school, sending them to higher learning. So all of it is investment. It's just what you invest in, what kind of school you sign up. You know, some people, when they're young, they sign up for college, regular college, community college, local colleges, universities. Some people sign up for prison or jail to go in and get the education. <clears throat> and uh, they're not paying them dividends, long-term dividends. So you, you have to look at it like, say, you're, it, it, it doesn't, you know, the Bible said, God's words never come back void. It come, everything come back. 
it grows. And as you can see, sometimes you meet a person who's older and they're stuck in sin and iniquity. And what you realize is that they've been bad seed for years and now they're older. It's paying them back. So keep that in mind. That bad behavior that they never curtail, they never stop, they never break, they got better at it. And it grew on them and it now paying them a payout. It's time for them to collect. And they're collecting heavily. So you have to look at the same thing if you invest in righteousness, morality. You invest in your education. As you get older, it pay you back. You know, the herbs you take today is you're taking herbs for your retirement. If you live to see your retirement. The exercise you do today is paying you back for next year and the year after. Someone said, why? Because that's just how it is. <clears throat> that's just how it is. It, it grows. Everything that you do multiply. Uh, comfort. So as Christians, we're into comfort, not luxury. There's a difference. See, I can sit in a seat that looks very gaudy and look ostentatious and um, look over the top and look expensive, but I'm not comfortable in it. So it's better to be comfortable than to be ostentatious, to be over the top. So we invest in this type of stuff. And what that does is that it teach you also what really you're working for. You're working to be comfortable. You're working to lift the curse that is in society. But most people, they think that the aim is to get to that place where you're living like, you know, a million dollars, like you have millions of dollars. While they're, they're not getting their creature comforts right here and now. Again, that type of investment is something... Which I would say, why you you it's an investment because as you teach yourself these things, it pay you back later on. So you learn to make certain choices. You learn, oh, so life is not about ostentatious or, you know, blinging, you know, and living like I'm a multimillionaire. No, life is about comfort. You know, the chair you sit in, how comfortable it is. When you take a shower, how comfortable you are. So it would be better for me. In my mind, if I'm advising you as a as 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 a person who listen to me here, that it would be better for you to live in a house that's a thousand five hundred square feet as an example, than to live in a house of two thousand five hundred square feet, but you're not comfortable. So if you have to live in a house and say your warmth level is seventy two degrees, or your cool level is seventy degrees, whatever it is, but now because of the extra thousand square feet you have to be at a warm level at 68 degrees. And now you're not comfortable. I would say that you, you go to where you can be comfortable. And you train yourself like that, especially when you're younger. So when you get older now, somebody says, well, how does that pay me back? How does that pay back when you get older? You learn what is your number one you know, priority. What's, you prioritize what is priority. But if you train yourself when you're younger, that... It's better to be uncomfortable and to look um, large or big or look like you have money. When you get older, that will whip your butt. Because when you get older, that's when you really need comfort, right? As you get older, you have to make choices. Do I want to climb these stairs? So do I want a home that is more comfortable for me to move around? Because probably my knee's not as good as it used to be. So he said, that's when it becomes important. But a person now could be thinking, no, uh, these things, Lord, I can't see it as investment. It's your behavior, changing behavior when you're younger is part of your investment, you know. Part of your investment is, you know, is probably to learn an instrument, learn a language. So I'm going to say, why is it an investment? Because it enriches your life where money can't touch. It's only time you're putting in. You have to buy an instrument, but it's just time you're putting in. And it's just some, some things that add value to your life that it, somebody could say, well, but I don't see it in the bank. It cannot be always about what's in the bank. Because as I say, you could have less, but you're more comfortable. Then you have more and you're uncomfortable. And I've, I've been, you know, for the job I used to do in the past, I've been into homes that were quite large, you know, mansions, literally. And I was freezing, and I've made mistakes like that. Go to somebody home, leave my jacket in the car, and have on just like a sweatshirt. And I'm, I'm, I'm literally in the house. I'm, I'm trying to maintain my, my composure and not have my teeth shatter, 
you know, my teeth starts knocking together because I'm so cold. And I'm like, how could they live like this? You know, it's, it's, you know, so for me, I would just like cut the square feet and I'll keep warm. Um, but now as you get older, now you have to maintain that, um, that look, right? So that becomes a bad way of, <laughs> to me, doing life. So we invest in comfort, it's better to be comfortable. So you comfort, as I say, doesn't take on sometimes. Most of the time, doesn't take a lot of money. It takes on a, a, a lifestyle practice and understanding. What am I investing? What is the aim? You know, you have a specific aim in mind. Because <clears throat> human beings, we're not animal, animals. We're not deer, reindeers. Um, we are humans, and so we need comfort. Uh, we need a lot of creature comfort to make us. Um, live a life that don't feel wretched. The more uncomfortable are we are, the more wretched we feel. So you invest in that as you get older. That's gonna pay you back. So we're laying the ground rules here. So notice here your social connection. You know, sometimes an investment in social connection that can make your life very rich. That, as I say, money can't buy. And as you know, every year, especially this time of year, we deal with so many people who um will commit suicide but have a lot of money. And they say their life is wretched. And so why? Because they say, all I have is money. Because that's the investment they made. So you make investment in your social connection. Sometimes that could just be picking up the phone and calling somebody. Even in a social distant time in this world. If you just have the ability to you have to learn and practice to talk to people. You, you can burn hours just on the phone. And forget where the day went. And forget that you were even lonely. Because you're not. You're with somebody. They're just not physical with you. And so your social connections, that takes time. So that time, if you understand what I'm talking about, diversifying here, will take time away from you making money. But it's an investment that will pay you greatly. And sometimes it, be, it has value to it because your connections make you can do things that you couldn't do otherwise. Your financial stability, notice again, not financial volume, but the quality. Your stability is better to be stable. Uh, is if you can be financial, you know, have so much money that you you just you you you're good. You, you you don't have to worry about buying stuff and stuff like that. It's great, but that's not not for most people because ninety percent or more of the people don't have that type of investment. Most of the what we talk about the market is not is not most of the society. It's a small, the smaller percentage of the society. Um, so investments most of the time are for people who have investable money from their pay after they've paid all their bills. So, but financial stability is something that one can have at any um, class in life. Would you be um, just make just regular work or making your regular money, or someone that's making middle class or upper middle class or book bucks, um, yuppies? Financial stability is still something there because again, if you have big money and you learn to live and just be comfortable, then comfort for somebody that has crazy money, more money than brains, as I say can learn, get even more stable by learning, not just to live within the means, but understanding the concept, as I said, about comfort and about that there's other things to invest in. So financial stability could mean for them that instead of making a, getting a home for 10,000 square feet, you get a home for probably 7,000 square feet and so forth and so on. And then that make you not have a high burn rate and then run oneself into big problems. Kindness, especially normally, this is more talked about. It should be talked about all year long, but how the culture goes. Um, this concept of kindness, whether it be charity or however you love, however you want to call it, um, is focus heavily on this year. Give something to somebody. So make it happen. Um, be kind. Remember, remember those who are in need, and you take care of them. And remember that some of what you have is to bless others. So this is again is an investment portfolio. This again is an investment in behavior. This again is an investment in one's heart, one's mind, you know, to address selfishness. So kindness is important. So I guess I should flesh it out a little bit before I move on. So when we're talking about kindness as an investment, this is part of your investment portfolio. It, but it, it does something for you because you're investing in you. Somebody said, no, I'm giving away money. Yeah, because that's money you could go invest in more, more in portfolio. If you decide that you're going to give something like a simple, say fifty dollars to the poor every every month, and that's it, that fifty dollars could have gone in four hundred one k. Some somewhere it could go, right? So that normally money 
it will be gone if you give it to charity, if you give it to somebody that is in need. All right. So when you invest like this, it's just part of the investment portfolio. And it's just part of the investment of knowing that you're you're making somebody comfortable. You're putting food on somebody's table. You're putting a smile on somebody's face. Right? This part of the investment. But what it does, it does something for you that nobody can do for you. Or you can do this for yourself. It teaches you to be kind. It teaches you that to remember those who are not as fortunate as you. To remember those who didn't get certain opportunities that you got. To remember those who probably were oppressed or treated bad. And to remember those who need the gospel preach, which is part of one charitableness in supporting like what I'm doing here. So when you do this, what you're doing, you're blessing others that you never meet, you never know, but you're blessing. So that's part of your investment. And, you know, I remember one time we, as a church, we had supported the gentleman that had helped build um, an orphanage in India. And the cost that it cost him to build the orphanage was somewhere in the, in the region of, um, I can't remember, it was less than 100,000. Other people built, gave money, but what he gave. But he was a pastor that was in retirement. And he took some of the retirement money he had and helped build this orphanage. And he, you know, he went there every so every so many years. He'd go and visit, and so that was a blessing to support that. So I always remember that. I use that as an example because that was more public um, act that we did. And I remember thinking about it and say, well, you know, the money he used, he could have bought a brand new five series with the money. It was similar money. It was like six or something thousand or seven something thousand. It was somewhere in there. And I was thinking he could have bought a BMW brand new 5 Series. And by now, the orphanage is still there. By now, that car would be out of sync and he would have to replace it. Or or not yet, yet, but you know what I'm saying. It would be older. But that's what he chose to use some of his investment dollars. So what is the return on that? He's not going to, he can't say, well, it's part of his portfolio. Part of his portfolio there. God bless his soul, is um, is that he could look at that and he could say, that's part of my investment portfolio. Now, for somebody that's only into business, they wouldn't see that. They don't see the blessings of those kids as part of their portfolio. But I see that. That does something for, for the person as a human being that enriches their life that money can't buy, that money in the bank does not replace. You know, your heart, your 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 being, your... Your, your your soul is something that, uh, not for salvation, I'm saying, just for your day-to-day -day living, that there's things in our lives, basically, that enriches us and make us quite much more wealthy and have a more diverse por portfolio than somebody's quite wealthy. And you see this with people who are rich. You know, they try to do some big endowment. Why? Because there's more value to life than just having a whole bunch of money and just looking at it. Because you can't do anything. And like God says, and we'll cover that hopefully later on in the week, that when you invest in certain things, it 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 is an investment that it comes back. You know, those who are poor, those who are naked, those who are in prison, you invest some money into them and it comes back. Because remember, what is our work? Our work is while the evildoers in our society are trying to lock people up who are innocent, trying to oppress the poor. We're there to try to do um, the opposite. So uh, I hope as you know, we close out this year that you do remember this and bless somebody, put a smile on somebody's face and if they don't know you, it was you. Um, our recreation is another important thing, our recreation, our recreational pursuit. Um, one of the most beautiful words to describe going for a hike, going for, for, for something, a bicycle ride, whatever. Um, you're investing in you because it's recreating you, right? W there's a blessing that we receive when we enjoy nature, when we sweat a little bit from some type of um, social activity that has something to do with and exerting ourselves, that we really recreate ourselves. And it's something that you can't see again. It's an investment you can't see. But being a recluse, being a hermit, uh, it's a punishment. It's a it's a taking away from the soul of a human being. Um, uh, it it doesn't rebuild you, 
But when you do things that put a laugh on your face, a smile on your face that has something to do with you're out there, you're, as I say, riding a bicycle in nature, you're going for a hike, um, it's recreational. And um, it's, we need it as human beings because we were built in a garden. And we were built somehow for happiness. Well, it's connected to recreation, <laughs> to something that is outdoor, where there's trees and flowers and so forth. Uh, last night I was on USA Today and they had, uh, they had an article. And the article stated um, the, the, the top Christmas light shows um, in a garden or in a botanical garden. So the, 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 you know, they have normally this time of year, they have like these drive through or walk through light shows that you can go to. And <clears throat> there's basically lights on both sides of the walkway or the driveway and you drive through it or walk through it. And, you know, they all kind of displays and stuff like that. So I'm sure you've seen them. Hopefully you've seen them. <clears throat> so, um, but it, the article was in a botanical garden. So, you know, so this, this is time of year we can, still go for a walk in the freezing cold. Um, well, no, you can go for a walk all the time. But um, but you can go for a walk and enjoy the lights, the, the Christmas lights and so forth, but in a garden. So when I saw the article last night, I, before I click it, I say, um, I say I'm, I'm sure Longwood, Longwood Gardens in um, Pennsylvania is um, probably one of the top um, in the country, because it's botanical gardens, according to users, right? So I remember seeing that, and I say, I bet Longwood Gardens is going to be one of the top ones. It just so happened that Longwood Gardens was number one, according to readers, the number one um, light Christmas display, where they have, they say, over half a million lights. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, they decorate the trees and various different things with lights. It's, it, and I saw the picture; it's just fascinating. I've been there, seen it; it's it's, it's unbelievable display. Um, so it's worth doing, but you know, you go there, you, you take that in, what are you taking in? Yeah. You know, there's a modernity of the lights and so forth, but also it's, you're taking in just the absolute ingenuity and display that goes on there. And, but there's other ones, there's nine more that made a top 10 across the country, but you go, do you do that? What are you doing? You invest in time, you know, somebody could say, ah, oh, no, the Grinch of Christmas will say, no, you're wasting money and time. You need to do everything to make money. No, you do. You take your time, you go enjoy something like that, and you see the marvel of God and marvel of human ingenuity combined in a place like Longwood Gardens. And you come back, you, you feel nice. And somebody said, well, yeah, but you just spend money and you didn't, you know, you didn't do anything to make money, but you invest in you, you invest in your brain, you invest in your soul, you, you invest in, in, there's many evildoers right now that all they're doing is trying to rip off the government to steal money. And instead of they go, go ahead and enjoy yourself and stop worried about all this investment. That's part of your investment. And that's part of your culture you build around yourself. Because part of investments are paid dividends. You do certain practices, you develop a culture around you, and that culture pay you back in beautiful dividends. So you want that. So you want to invest in health, right? Uh, lastly here, and we'll cover this. All of this we'll try to cover in the next four days. You invest in health. As you invest in health, what's going to happen? You're, you're going to pay back yourself financially, physically. Because, again, look at one of the biggest problems we have in the country is health care. And as people get older, they burn through the healthcare care system because it's so expensive to take care of the body. But if you exercise, you take care of your body, you eat, you do what you have to do to maintain your health. As you get older, your body will pay you back in great ways that nothing, all these investments I'm talking about, I don't know, other than being saved in the kingdom, I don't know what is more important than, you know, your soul and your health, you know, comfort and everything like that. It's all great and good. But if I could be, I could be on the nicest bed and I'm in pain, the bed is no good. But if I can be in a nice bed and I'm not in pain, the bed is good. <laughs> so make that investment, and, you know, diversify investment, see life as more. There's other things to put um, time and energy and money into, you know, don't, don't, you know, don't have all your creature comforts met and you have not all week drink a, a juice or a smoothie with some nice organic berries and stuff like that. And thinking that's too expensive. I've known people, I've talked to them, oh, that's too expensive. So you, 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 you put all that gas in your car and put less money in your body. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's craziness. So Christ explains now the story of um, the seed. So in the same seed now, we'll pull the same lessons. Notice here in Matthew 13, verse 16 onwards, my 13 verse 16 onwards, it says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Right? So you want to be blessed, right? So you're here. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those th things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. This is not just for the past. We're living in a time when we expect and we are experiencing, I believe, a level of righteousness that it, it some of it was not even mentioned much in the Bible. It was just foretold. It had come a time. Remember, Adam and Eve lost the garden and then we went into death and destruction. And we are experiencing things right now, in spite of all the madness going on, that um, really speaks to what I'm talking about here, about that investing in multiple things. That many prophets, this is something they saw in prophetic utterances and they wrote it down, but never really experienced it or saw it. And for us, things that are normal, it was not even normal for the, 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 uh, the patriots and prophets. Things that they struggled with is just something that is supposed to be normal in our society. That we, we, we argue against, even go out in the street and protest that this should be the way. Um, before wickedness was so darkness, so much darkness was around that things that we protest and things that we take for granted that is normal in our society used to not be normal just a hundred years ago, just 50 years ago. So we keep it in mind, even though there's people in our society fighting to bring us back to the darkness and the dark ages. But still, for many of us, there's lifetime practice we do that we don't even think about it anymore. We just don't do it. Remember up until, what, 20 years ago or less? You could go into, you just go everywhere and people just smoking and puffing all this, you know, the dirty stick, you know, the cigarette. And it used to be in planes, trains, public areas, people just smoking and and ban. But I can tell you there's writings where the ban for it was called for because this thing is such a dangerous thing. But it took probably over a hundred years to get to a point where they said, man, listen, we need to put the kibosh on tobacco. And now you can go into public places and not be stink by the smoke. So there's changes that has happened that is phenomenal. You know, just think about, you know, people used to just get killed and lynched for being black. So th there's so much changes that happen in society in general that if you if you really think about it, we're in a time where the Bible predicted that there's things that, just like in the time of Christ, that um, was just not normal. And um, And when Christ was preaching, it shocked them. And there's things right now that we do and take for granted that if they were living, they would be like, what? You don't do these things? And they probably did things that's going on that would shock them that is so wicked that's still going on. But even, you know, I remember I was watching a documentary coming out of, I think, um, Utah with the Mar Mormons. And they say in the 70s, the word pedophilia was not um, part of the vocabulary. It was in the dictionary, I guess, but it was not part of the vocabulary. It was it talked about in the Bible. Don't use those words, but it was not, it's not a major thing. But it ha it was happening. Now it's something that is kind of splashed on the front page news. Uh, if you saw yesterday, one of the second major headline news um, in um, in USA Today was about a, and it was on NBC News was about a guy that left from Virginia and took a twelve year old, tried to kidnap he kidnapped that twelve year old, but he met her online and then tricked her and then tried to kidnap her, bring her back to Virginia. But he run a, po a pedophilia website that talks about torturing kids. But that was like, but that these things always happen. But here we are, um, the government is trying to clamp down on that type of stuff. So things have changed much, right? Think about the priest abuse. The priest used to get away with that stuff and nobody talked about it, but they were raping all over the place. But now there's, there's, there's at least it's viewed in a negative way and they're trying to clamp down on it somewhat, I guess. Um, so notice here, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any of um, anyone hear the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So the gospel is the seed. So here Christ is saying the gospel is the seed. So as I say, if you hear me talking about 
diversify your investment. And I'm not talking about money. Understand here, Christ does the same thing. He's saying, listen, it's a seed. Seed, you know, it's all a seed. Everything grows and multiplies. So somebody could throw the seed and it's thrown in a set situation that is not going to cause a return on investment. So th there is multiple factors involved for the seed to return a good increase. So to make sure that you're investing in things that you know are going to guarantee a good increase. Listen, if you spend a lot of money and time on tobacco, smoking tobacco, you will not get an increase. The increase well, you get an, inc uh, an investment return, but investment return is going to be um, messed up clothing, messed up furniture, messed up lungs, so forth and so on, cancer. So we're not talking about that because that would be the seed falling by the wayside. The seed is just not going to even grow and multiply. Nothing good is going to come off it because the seed is the gospel. Gospel can't grow in a tobacco-filled lungs and brain. And the, then next here, it says, But he that receiveth the seed in a stony place, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. So he's in a better place, but there's stones. First you have to take care of the stones, right? <clears throat> yet had not root in himself, but dure it for a while. So he'd stick around for a while. A little growth happened. For um, for when tribulation and persecution, persecution arises because of the word, by and by he's offended. So he can't take too much pressure. A uh, little trouble comes, you know, so if one week there's no rain, boom, he's done, right? So th that investment is not a well good investment. So when you're investing, you have to say, what am I going to invest in that's going to give me a good return? And that's what we're going to go through the rest of this week, right? So it's the same thing in financial investment, same thing in farming. You don't go to a ground, in other words, and the ground is rock solid and you throw seed. You're wasting your time. Someone says, oh, you don't know the heart of the seed. Don't be silly. <laughs> you know, you, you have to go there and do some work. Same thing, you don't go to a, a, a ground to put seed in and you see filled with rocks and you throw the seed. Um, you're being silly. And what's going to happen is that the ground... Uh, is, is some of the seed might grow a little bit, but it's going to die because the ground needs to be treated. You need to do something with the ground. You need to pull up some of the seed, the, the, the stone, put them aside, make a wall with them or something. And then you, you need to plow and the seed can take root and grow and you can get your crop. That's what we want to do. And we're showing you that there's multiple ways. You don't want to be the person that all you put your, your, all your stock in is just making money because there's more to life. And if you you can make the money and you drop dead, what's the point? How many people are dropping dead fast right now? And you couldn't get them to invest a dime and a, a, and a minute into their physical bodies. And and so all the money that they have, they just drop dead left it. You know, the money is just there because they drop dead. And they, you couldn't get them to say, hey, listen, man, don't you stop? You can't you just stop for a second and just take some herbs. Or stop for a second and go exercise. Oh, no, no, I got to make that money. Well, now you're dead. What happened? So notice here. He that receive a seed um, among thorns is he that hear the word and that the care of this life and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he become, become it unfruitful. So again, there's more to life, you know, you, the deceivableness of riches and the cares of this life. You get it so bogged down with just life and what's going on that you forget that, you know, sometimes you have to just stop, pull up your foot and go drink some tea, all right? Go look through your window and enjoy the, the whatever you're looking at through your window. All right, just relax and enjoy your family and go talk to somebody. The world is going to burn up anyhow sooner or later. And it's, uh, some parts of it are already on fire. Uh, so go ahead and enjoy something. And, and you're going to realize that say, a lot of the troubles in this world is because people don't stop for a second and just uh, just take a deep breath and relax a little bit and enjoy life. They're just out there grabbing and criminality and doing all kinds of sins and they didn't forget a break until they drop dead. You don't want to be like that. So the deceitfulness of Richard, running down money, there's more value to life than all the money. You know, I've, uh, over the years I've been watching and I talk about it sometime by God's grace in next year, um, like a lot of videos on the tiny homes, not because I'm living in one, but because I I realized that you could have such a small home and when you look at the home and the way the person laid it out and the ingenuity they put into the design and the the, the, the appointments, whatever they appointed in the home, they take a, such a small space and make it large. So you realize that you could take a large space, a larger space than what they do, what they have, 
and you can do things with it to make it even larger. You could take a very small home and it feels like a bigger home because of some of these ingen ingenious moves that they make. So then it really sends to my mind this idea that sometimes you, you could have a big space that you really can't use and you could have a smaller space that you really use it and make it become a bigger space. And that's not like just talk. This is real. So it's again, it's, 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 it's where you open your mind and you realize there's more to life than what one often think about. So notice here, um, verse 23 now. Um, but he that receiveth the seed into good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. So even at thirty, um, you're putting in one seed, you get him back. 30 times what you invested. So it's the same thing. And I can say the same when it comes on to, you know, you read a book, you do some exercise, you take some herbs, you juice, you spend some time praying, you spend some time meditating, you spend some time in religious services, you spend time doing like what we're doing here, listening to a talk like this. Um, the value of it really, I believe, is 30, 60, 100 fold. Depends on the soil, let's hear me, because, you know, sometimes we can have hard hearts and tough heads and the word does not take root and flourish. But if you listen to me here and you get up and you make some ginger tea, fresh ginger, cut it up, put it in some water, boil it, put a little sugar with, with it after you strain it off, you drink it. Somebody say, well, that's all, if, if that's all you did after listening to me, I felt like it was worth me doing this because that ginger is going to nicely soothe your stomach. It's going to give you some antioxidant. It's going to make you better physically for it. If that's all you did, I feel like that's an investment that's going to pay you back. But if you go back and you hit back a beer after you listen to me, you'll just damage your stomach and damage your body a little bit a little bit more. And that's what I don't want you to be doing. I want you to make in that investment that's going to multiply and later on gonna, you're, going to, you're going to get some residuals from it. That's where you want to be. So the various aspects of life we want to invest in. And so we want to know that with the soil, um, when you invest it in soil, you know that God is have to bless you. So you, this is why we, 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 we are faithful in our Christian walk and in our morality, because we need God's blessing. No matter how much you, you, you're going to ignore God, whatever you have is not going to bless. So God needs to bless you so that it rains, the sun sh shine on, on you, God's sun rise upon you. Um, the soil that you have around you is soil that can take um, multiplication. And the germinating principle is all God. So there's things that God do in your life that you can't do for you, similar to the soil. Only a supernatural power beyond you can bless you um, in the way God promises that he'll bless you if you follow him. Um, but still, you have to do your part. You have to prepare the soil. You have to prepare your heart. You have to prepare your life around you. Um, you have to prepare the soil for the seed you want to grow. If you're trying to grow palm trees, well, and if you're up here, where I'm at in the north, it's not going to work. Um, but if you're down south, you prepare the soil for the palm tree you want to grow. You want to know that you have to put nutrients in the soil. So that's why we read, we study, we meditate, we invest in our bodies. We put something in because we want to get back something out. There's many people dying today from inflammatory disease like COVID because they put nothing in. And so they get nothing out. We want to irrigate the so soil. So we want to make sure that we're drinking the water, water of life, physical water also. You want to do weed management. Sometimes there's people in your life that need to be weeded out. Sometimes there's food in your fridge that need to be weeded out. Sometimes there's garbage in your attic, in your in your basement, in your garage, in your house that need to be weeded out. Sometimes things got to go. Um, there's entertainment that need to be weeded out of your life. And you weed these things out of your life, you find that your life start to grow. The, the gospel start to grow. Your, your social connections start to grow. Um, timing is everything. Uh, so you want to be able to put the seed in the right time and you want to harvest in the right time. You don't want to miss the timing. You know, timing is everything. You want to learn techniques, tried and true techniques, techniques from other people that's new techniques, old techniques of how to succeed. Because this is part of the investment. Every investor does this. As if you're investing like this, you're not doing this type of learning and, and knowing what's the new technique. You will never succeed the way you are to succeed. And when all is said and done, you want to remember God and remember the poor. You don't want to forget God in any of your ways. 
and you don't want to forget the poor. We'll talk more tomorrow. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, again for the blessings of your word and the blessings of knowing thee. I pray, dear Lord, that truly we may invest in ourselves and bring glory to thy name. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with me here and looking forward to talking to you again live tomorrow morning where we should talk about the importance of church. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm -hmm.